Okay, folks, hold on. Let me do this. The cat needs attention. Cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. The little boy blue and the man on the moon. When you're coming home, Dad, I don't know when. But we'll be together then, Dad. You know we're going to have a good time, man. Cats in the craters and the silver spoon. A little boy blue and the man on the moon. When you're going to come home, and I don't know when. We're going to be together then, Dad. We're going to be home now, Dad. Got some college and another day, and the cat's right here, and he wants to stay. Don't know what to do, cause I can't ignore him. You know what I'm saying? Sin, it's sin, my friend. It's sin. Sin. It be thinning. You be thin, it's thin, Mister Thin. Are right, you guys doing? How's the screen? I haven't shaved. How's the screen? Everything good? I haven't shaved. I'm getting back. Guys, pray for me. I'm back. I got to get back in my cardio, eating right, getting back to holiness, purity, righteousness, love, and worship. Pray for me. Be prayed up. You know the rules, right? Mods, take care of those who disrespect the rules. What's up, Sargon? It's a sin, Mr. It's sin. Old computer. Lord willing, I'll be using my new computer shortly. But right now, let me invite this young lady. But let the heart of one want a day. That's right, the Joker, mister. What's up, Ricky Roo? Ricky Roo? Ricky Roo, and he's on who? Is that, what's her name? Betty Boop, that's Betty Boop. What's up? You need attention, please. You need attention. Sorry, hold on. But the college just the other day. Now, you think I can find her name? I don't think I can. Where is she? Oh, there she goes. Hey, ba la 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 la. Okay. All right. Come here, Kenny. Come here, Kenny. Here, Kenny. All right, let's pray together. Let's pray together, guys. All right. Name of the Father and of the Son mm -hmm. and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, <clears throat> creator of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. <clears throat> he descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but those from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power and the glory, both now and forever, and to ages of ages, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. May I be your mouthpiece, Holy Spirit. Purge us in your purifying fire. And I include our loved ones, my daughters, my angels. Forgive us our shortcomings. Forgive me. Forgive us for <clears throat> failing you. Forgive me for being a hypocrite. Destroy our hypocrisy. Destroy our lies. Destroy every form of blasphemy, idolatry. Destroy our weakness, our flesh, our lust. Give us perfect, miraculous discipline, spiritually and physically. Fill us with your fruit to breathe in you, to move in you, to have our being in you. And I ask Holy Spirit for mercy and patience and take us to a higher level to confess our sins, turn away from our sins, not justify our sins, and obey the Lord Jesus and study your word, the scriptures. Live out your word. <clears throat> Proclaim your word and be doers of your word. Grant me that grace. So that I don't disqualify myself, but finish the race. We trust in you, Holy Spirit. Fill us as you filled the holy prophets and the holy apostles, such as our hero, to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ as Paul, the other apostles and the prophets said, as the holy saints who are now glorified in the presence of Jesus Christ, not for the praise of men. <clears throat> to never prostitute ourselves for status, position, for money or fame. Purge us of that evil. And not to live double lives. Have mercy on us and forgive us. 
and give me the power to practice what I preach and heal us of our vices. Heal me of my lust and food addiction and anything that disgusts you. May we hate what you hate and love what you love and be merciful to us, Holy Spirit. You are the teacher. Give me perfect recall of every jot, tittle portion of scripture. Destroy error from me. Destroy all sin in us. Destroy all mistakes from us. <clears throat> and I ask for clarity of speech and thought. Destroy all sad satanic agitation, all attacks of Satan and his dogs. Muzzle them and teach them fear of the Lord that we will never be politically correct, but bold as lions, glorifying Jesus Christ unto death until the Lord returns. And may the Lord Jesus shine in and through us, increase in us and our loved ones, my daughters, purified in the blood of Jesus Christ. Feed us the flesh of Jesus Christ. Give us the blood of Jesus Christ. And give me the discipline. To be holy and healthy and strengthen my throat, my lungs, my chest, my heart, my arteries with the help I need to glorify Jesus Christ. And use it for the praise and majesty of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, not for vanity or glory. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you guide the session. Bless this young lady. Open her heart to the voice of Jesus. Draw out all other voices. To own this ministry. Own this channel. Destroy censorship. And may you be magnified in and through us. And the Lord Jesus sent the throne upon our hearts, my heart, that I truly love Jesus. Though I fail him, I desire to love him. We desire to love him, though we fail. Never abandon us, Holy Spirit. Bless this session for the glory of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay, we have a young lady who wants to ask questions. Now, before I bring her up, do you want to change your name or do you want to keep your name? So you can put in private chat. You okay with that? She reached out to me, so we'll see what her questions are. Guys, you know the rules. Enforce the rules, please. So she's not responding, so I don't know. We see her, but I don't think she sees me. Hey, Zena, what a kind of fina. The cat needs attention again. Cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man on the moon. Do you want me bring you up with your name or not? All right. Yeah, you can't. I can't hear you because I haven't brought you up. Okay, I just want to make sure now I can bring you up. All right, now I can hear you because now I brought you up. I got to shave. I'm looking old. So my old computer, by the way, guys. All right, what's up? We You can speak now. Okay. Um, so I was just having a few questions because I'm battling between um, – Christian. Speak better in your microphone. Your sound is not as clear as it was on. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Guys, can you hear the sound? It seems like it's so go ahead. So I just have a couple questions. Um, you know, I was born Muslim, I was born into Islam and right. And I used to be super religious. Like I used to, you know, wear the hijab and everything, pray five mm -hmm. times a day. And now I'm just What's your ethnicity, by the way? I'm Arab. Wow. Interesting. Go yeah, for it. I'm actually from Palestinian. I'm kind of scared. Wow. I'm shaking. Wow. Yeah, I'm super nervous. Don't be nervous. Uh, I'm not, I'm nobody special. Believe me, I'm <laughs> nobody special. Take don't don't be nervous. There's nothing to be nervous about. Um. So, I met a lot of Christians. Um, and they used to ask me questions, questions, you know, that I didn't know, or I would tell them it's not true. Come to find out. It is true. Mm -hmm. So now I'm kind of confused. Um, I have a Bible I bought a couple months ago. What version? I got the King James version. It's gonna be very hard for you to understand. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's a little um, a little advanced. Um, a little what? It's a little advanced. Yeah, I would not have gotten the King James not because it's not an excellent translation, it is, but it's written in Elizabethan English. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I call Shakespearean English. So I would have gotten, since you're coming to want to understand the Bible, the NIV for you. It's called NIV New International Version. But you can actually read the Bible online. I'm going to give you a link right now. Okay. You can even read it in Arabic. It has it in all various languages. So let me get you the link where you can actually read the Bible online. Mm -hmm. Here it is. This is Bible Gateway. I'm going to get, I'm going to post the link to you guys. Here it's in public for you guys, but here for the, for you it's in private chat. So if you look at private chat, you see that link right there. Uh, yeah, I see it. Okay, now I'm going to show you where you find the Bible versions. So okay. that one. So <clears throat> King James is too hard right now. Okay. 
So don't use that right now. Here it is, the link for available versions. You'll see it's in many, many different languages, even in Arabic. So if you prefer Arabic, here it is. If not, you're going to scroll down that list. And I'm going to I'm going to screen share so I show you. Mm -hmm. So you can see how it works. Okay, we're going to share the screen. All righty, right there. Let me enlarge it. Hey, what a kind of, I don't know why I'm singing that song. I got some issues, sister. I may have ADHD. And you're fine. That's all right. And I, you know, God takes broken vessels and perfects them and uses them to glorify his name. So so here are the versions. Here, Amharic, Amuzgo, Guerrero, Arabic, see? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I can't pronounce all this, but you go to the English one. Yeah. Here, you see the English? I see the English. So when you go to English, you're going to find new international version. This is excellent for those who are first coming to understand the Bible. So it's right here. New international version. And I you see. Yes, I see it. And they also allow you to listen to the Bible being narrated. Audio Bible. So you see here when you see this, that means it's audio. So you click there and then you can start just playing the audio version. Yes. OK, I so see it. That's what you do. Now, the next thing you're going to do is to show you where you're going to begin. So when you click on New International Version, you have two sections. Old Testament, which is the scriptures inspired by God through the prophets for the nation of Israel, preparing for the coming of Jesus. That's going to be heavy reading. You're going to get confused in this for now. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the New Testament. That is the revelation of Jesus Christ. When Christ comes into the world, he establishes the new covenant and fulfills what the prophet said about him. And it starts with Matthew, you see? Yep. So what you're going to do for now, just so you know who the historical Jesus <clears throat> claimed to be and what he did, you're going to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay. That's the order. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then you're going to read about the history of the disciples of Jesus. When he went to heaven, he sent them out to establish his church and preach the good news that's the book of acts so start with these uh, matthew mark luke john acts and then when you're done with that you can move forward to the other books but these books are in for people who have come to the faith who have been baptized so they can understand what the faith is and how to live it like the book of romans but this is the history okay. what did jesus do what did jesus say how long did jesus preach Etc. And then Acts, what did the disciples of Jesus do when he went to heaven, then sent them out by the Holy Spirit? This is the history. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, X. Now the rest are letters to churches instructing them about how to live, how not to live, and answering questions. That will come later for you. Okay. So that's what you do for now. Okay. But now you said you have questions. What are they? I, I do. Um, so... Ooh, sorry, I'm really nervous. So, um, I are you was nervous because I'm bald, or what are you nervous? No, about? I'm just, you know, I, you know, being told something was the truth for so long. Now, I'm kind of stuck. It's it's kind of hard for me. Um, I understand. So, someone had asked me if is it true that you know men can be on women? I yeah. said absolutely not. Where did you find that? Oh. It's in your book. Show mm -hmm. me. You know, they would show me it, and I can't really defend it. No, you know more. Like, there's nothing I can say because it's clearly there. That is there. Um, and other things about the Prophet Muhammad. Um, see, now I'm kind of stuck because, you know, uh, sorry, I'm so nervous. <laughs> okay, no need there's, to be. There's, there's a lot of. Apparently, there's a lot of horrific things about the prophet. Yes, there is. Too many. Can you tell me? Can sure. you show me? I want to know, you know. Yeah, I will show you from authentic sources. I mean, because I'm assuming Palestinian, you're, you were from a Sunni background. Yeah. Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to sum up some of the things Muhammad did, then I'm going to show you. And I have articles, and in my articles, I link to Muslim websites because Muslims will accuse us of lying. Mm -hmm. But then we quote Muslim websites. Number one, Muhammad <clears throat> sanctioned not only taking 
captive women and raping them, but married captive women and raping them, which okay. is unlike the Old Testament where the God of Moses told Moses, if you find a woman captive because they go to war, war is inevitable. Mm -hmm. We can talk about who started the war between the Muslims and the unbelievers. The God of Moses told Israel, you find a captive woman, you cannot enslave her, you cannot rape her. You give her a month to mourn, and then you marry her and treat her as a wife. And if you divorce her, you let her go. And yet here, Muhammad comes in the Quran and the Sunnah, and he says, when you take women captive, you can rape them. Now, they don't use the word rape, obviously. They're yes. not going to use the term. But if I ask you a question, if you got <clears throat> taken captive because there's a war mm -hmm. and a man has sex with you, mm -hmm. do you think you'd be willing to have sex with your captor? No. Absolutely not. Well, Islam says you have no choice. Once they capture you, you're their property. And he says you can even do it with married women. That's number one. Number two, I, I'm sure you know this, and it's not just with Muhammad, but the Quran sanctions this, and Islamic Sharia sanctions this. Muhammad not only took a nine-year-old to bed when he was 54, the Quran actually, I'm going to show you this step by step. I'm going to show you these three things. The uh -huh. Quran actually <clears throat> permits... Pre-pubescent minors, young girls mm -hmm. who haven't reached puberty, to be married, for men to have sex with them, and divorce them to be married off again. That's in the Quran and the Sunnah. That's the second thing he did. And that's why to this day, in predominantly Muslim lands, not in the West, where Muslims know they can't do this and get away with this, and they try to present a rosy picture of Islam. Mm -hmm. To this day, in Muslim countries, if you go to Saudi Arabia... If you go to Afghanistan, wherever there's a Muslim majority, you'll have young girls, even before nine, being married off. And the only condition, and I'm going to show you this from authentic mm -hmm. Muslim sources, not my opinion. I'm going to show you. I'm just going to show you the three points that I'm going to show you thus far. Yeah. From authentic Muslim sources, the only condition, you know what the only condition is, uh, sister? I'm sorry? You know what the only condition is? No, I don't. That she can handle penetration. So I'm going to show you where a girl as young as six, seven, or eight can be married off, and the man can have sex with her. But if she can't handle penetration, he has to wait till she's nine. Wow. I'm going to show it to you. No, Jenny, it's not consent. Jenny, please don't chime in. Thirdly, Muhammad abolished adoption. He abolished adoption. Do you know why he did that? No, I don't. Because he had married his adopted son's divorced wife, Zainab. And then people started making fun of him, like, how could you take your son's wife? So then Allah abolished adoption, saying, well, adopted sons are not really sons, so stop calling them your sons. So Muhammad, the pervert, took his adopted son's divorced wife, Zainab bin Jash, and his adopted son was Zayd ibn Muhammad. <clears throat> but then he said, Abol uh, adoption is now abolished. And that's why in Islam, and you can go to your... Chef, and tell him, in Islam, can we adopt children? Say no. You can take care of orphans. I'm not saying you can't do that. But mm -hmm. when an orphan reaches age, he cannot live in the house if he's not a son. Why? Because you know about yeah. the issue of mahram. I heard about that. And now it was actually, I heard about this a couple years ago. I never really questioned it because I didn't understand. Um, but wow, I did not know that. <laughs> okay, but let's say you heard about that. Mm -hmm. How disgusting of a man that he would allow pedophilia, but then abolish a humane practice such as adoption, because that means in Muslim countries, there are orphans who don't know who their parents are, and there are couples who can't have children. And because mm -hmm. of Muhammad, orphans can't be adopted and raised as children, and couples who can't have children cannot adopt ch children because of Muhammad. Wow. Okay. How would you feel about that? Let's say you're married and you can't conceive. And you know there's an orphan who doesn't know who his or her parents are. And you would love to adopt that child and love them as your own. And you can't do it because of Islam. I mean, I would feel pretty hurt. But I know, I, I'm not def defending anything, but I know some people, they've told me, oh, well, you know, he can go and marry another wife. Absolutely not. I'm not that, okay. means, that means you're a piece of garbage, piece of meat, because you're irrelevant. What about you then? 
Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I honestly, I, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, but what about, okay, say so you can marry another wife and get a child. What about you? Don't you want a child? Yeah, I'm going to feel hurt. <laughs> I'm Do gonna you, feel you want a competition wife who can give him kids and you can't give him kids so that she looks down upon you? No, I would not want that. So my point is, okay, he can marry someone. What about the orphans that cannot be adopted and be made part of someone's family? I think that's sad. Well, that's what Muhammad did. So let me show you now the sources one by one. Let me show you Muhammad said you can rape captive women who are married. Okay. Then we're going to go online. You're going to see on sunnah.com. I didn't make it up. Okay. People don't think I'm making stuff up. So Muhammad was a very filthy, evil, immoral monster. But what the Muslims do, they focus on his good qualities and never speak about the bad qualities. That's why in Islamic law, Sharia, mm -hmm. you are killed if you criticize Muhammad. How convenient, huh? Yeah. Why would you need to kill people who talk about Muhammad? If Muhammad is a pillar and he's a saint, what's there to say about him to discredit him? Unless you know there's a lot of filthy, evil, vile things about this man. It's like me focusing on the good qualities of Hitler and ignoring what a monster he was, right? Yeah. And I'm going to show you. You ready? Let's go yeah. step up. Now, I'll give you links to the articles, but here. Islam, the religion of rape and adultery. But the thing is, I link to Muslim sources. So here it is in private chat for you. All right? And here you go, right here for everyone else. Guys, focus and help me to help you. Don't be distracted. That means you're not listening. All right, here's the passage. This is Surah An nisa mm -hmm. chapter 4, verse 24. Now, this is telling Muslim men whom they cannot have sex with, okay? Mm -hmm. Also forbidden are women already married. So I can't have sex with a married woman, right? Mm -hmm. Except those captives and slaves whom your right hands possess. Did you, you hear that? Yes. Put that on the screen. So I can't have sex with you if you're a married, married woman unless you're my captive or slave. That means then it doesn't matter you're married. I own you. I can now have sex with you. Now, what what was the reason this passage was sent down? Well, here you go. I have it here, but so you don't think I'm making it up. Sunnah.com. Sunnah.com. Here it is. Mm -hmm. If you go to that article I sent you, i link to Sunnah.com. So you can click on it. Bam. Does it say Christian.com? No, it, it says Sunnah.com. Okay. This is a Muslim site. So now let's see what it says. I want to see everyone see this. Look, so people don't think I'm lying. All right, right here. Okay. It says, uh, the book of suckling. And there's an interesting story related to this. Uh, chapter 9, it is permissible to have intercourse with a female captive after it is established that she's not pregnant. And if she has a husband, then her marriage is annulled when she's captured. Did you catch it? Yes, I see it. Okay, so if you're married and I take you captive, your marriage is void. Why? Yeah. I... Because Muhammad said so. Now watch here. Abu Sayyid al-Khudri reported that at the Battle of Hunayn, Allah's messenger sent an army out to us and encountered the enemy and fought with them, having overcome them, taken them captives. The companions of Allah's messenger seemed to refrain from having intercourse with captive women. Why? Why didn't they want to have sex with them? Because of their husbands being polytheists. They were like, all right, well, they're married. Their husbands are pagans. We refuse to have sex with them. Then Allah Most High sent down regarding that, and woman already married, except those whom your right hands possess, i.e. they were lawful for them when their idda period came to an end, meaning, no, don't worry about it. You can have sex with them. Don't worry that their husbands are kafir. Don't worry about it. Their husband's still alive. Just make sure they're not pregnant so that you know if they're pregnant, it's not your child. So now plow into them and rape them. Now, I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. uh, Decent, moral, mar married woman consent to having sex with her captor and her husband's alive. Would she consent? Can you repeat that? Would a decent, moral woman who's married consent to having sex with her captor when her husband's alive? No. But it's not up to you because it says that when you're taken captive, here, your marriage is annulled. You're his property. Your opinion doesn't matter. Wow. Exactly. Wow. But this is not just Sahih Muslim, mm -hmm. which is Sahih. Right here. You can, the link is right there. Mm -hmm. 
But now you go back. Here's another one. Okay. So this one here. <clears throat> Let me go here. Here's another one from Sahih Muslim. Let's go back here. This is another one. This hadith has been reported on the authority of Abu Sayyid al-Qudri through another chain of transmitters and words are they took captives on the day of Autas who had their husbands. They were afraid to have sexual intercourse with them. When this verse was revealed, and women already married except those whom your right hands possess, meaning don't have sex with women already married except those that your right hands possess. Don't be afraid. They're yours. Okay. Well, watch here. This one comes from Sunan Abu Dawood. Volume 2, number 2150. So when we click here, bam, Kitab and Nikah. Do you know Arabic, sister? I do. I speak fluent Arabic. <laughs> okay, can I ask you a question? Yes. Nikah. If I forget the fact that they told you means marriage. Yes. And, and if I come and say, I want to, and I use the word Nikah, I want to do Nikah with you. What am I saying to you? Um, you're asking for marriage. That's what they told you. Do a little research. You're going to find that nikah is actually the F word. Really? Yeah, I'm going to show it to you. Wow. What Islam did, what Islam did, it took this word for F, and then it made it a legal term for marriage. Because what do you do in marriage? You F each other. Sorry, I'm, I don't want to be graphic, but that's what it is. Yeah. I'm going to show it to you. Because when a man committed z uh, zina... Uh -huh. okay. Muhammad said, did you F her? Did you do nikah with her? He wasn't saying, did you marry her? Mm -hmm. I'll show it to you in a minute. But anyway, this hadith is sahih, right? Yes. Al-Albani. Book 11, hadith 2150. All right. Abu Sayyid al-Khudri said, the apostle of Allah sent a military expedition to Autas on the occasion of the Battle of Hunayn. They met their enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them captives. Some of the companions of Apostle Allah were reluctant to have relations with the female captives because of their pagan husbands. So Allah, the exalted, sent down the Quranic verse. And all married women are forbidden unto you, except save those captives whom your right hand possesses. This is to say that they are lawful for them when they complete their waiting period. No, no, don't worry about it. Once you take them captive, you can rape them and sell them. Are you okay with this? I'm not okay with that. This is how many people experience Islam. If you go back to your history, originally you were not Muslim. Your ancestors would have been Christian. Muslims came, attacked your city, raped your female ancestors, took them captives. You have the blood of rapists in your veins. Do you know that? No, I didn't. Yes, you have the blood of rapists in your veins. See here, here's a brother who tells you. As an Arab speaker, nikah means the F word. F U is an anik ik. Anyway, I'll show her that. Thank you, Robert. Robert because the Muslims have been brainwashed. This is your legacy. Muslims went and attacked places and took women captive, married women, and raped them. Now, that the word nikah, so when it's kitab and nikah, literally it's the book of effing. And if you think I'm lying, here we go. One second. Okay. He was a very vulgar man. His language was filthy, Muhammad. What would you think of a prophet who says, go bite your father's penises off? I never heard of that. I... I'm showing you Muhammad is. Now, do you see the Arabic here? I, I do. What does it say? Um, it says, Enni uh, Okay, and Nick Tuha. Okay, now watch. Look what and he said. Sorry. It's okay. That's fine. <laughs> but I want you to tell me, does it mean marriage here? Because let's see what the context is. This is Sahib Muslim. I'm sorry. Sahib Bukhari, the Sahib collection of Al Bukhari. Ekrama mm -hmm. related to Ibn Abbas said, when Maiz Ibn Malik, he had committed fornication, sexual morality, he wasn't married, came to the Prophet. He said to him, perhaps you kissed or winked or looked. Maybe you didn't commit adultery. No, Messenger Allah. He answered. He said, did you have intercourse with her? Using no euphemism. He used this word. And nik tuha. Does that mean married here? He's talking about someone committed adultery. Mm, no. It means, did you F her? Wow. And that's why it says he didn't use a euphemism. He just came up and said, did you F her? 
You know, he didn't say, did you marry her? He was committing uh, Zina. Yeah. You got it? Yeah, I understand. <laughs> now, you see how filthy, so kitab and nikah means the book of effing. So when someone says he wants to perform nikah with you, that means he wants to F you. But legally, so they call it a marriage. Now, let me show you again his filthy, because it's all tied in because you're saying how filthy Muhammad is. Now, watch Muhammad talking about biting people's penises off. Ready? Here you go. Right here. And now you see it's on sunnah.com, right here, sunnah.com. Sahih Al Adab Al Mufrad, that's by Bukhari, Book 41, Hadith 963. And I'll get you the links in a minute. Okay. Utay bin Damura said, I saw with Ubay a man who was attributing himself with an attribution of Jahaliyyah. He's speaking like the pre Islamic Arabs. So Ubay told him to bite his father's male organ and did not speak figuratively, i.e., was explicit. In other words, he told him to bite his penis off. He wasn't being figurative. So his companions looked at him and said, it appears that you disapprove of it. So Ubay is saying, oh, are you upset that I told this man to bite his father's penis? Mm -hmm. Then he said, I will never show apprehension to anyone with regards to this. Verily, I heard the prophet say, whoever attributes himself with an attribution of je jahiliyyah, then tell him to bite his father's male organ and do not speak figuratively. figuratively. So tell him to go bite his father's penis. So Muhammad said, that's what you tell people who boast about their lineage. Wow. Right? So there you go. I mean, here we go. And here again is Mishkat al Masabih, right here. Mm -hmm. Volume 2, page 1021. Ubay bin Kab told that he heard God's messenger say, if anyone proudly asserts his descent in the manner of the pre Islamic people, tell him to bite his father's penis. And do not use a euphemism. This is your prophet. Is this your example? That's what the Muslims tell me. He's the example. I just sent you the link in the private. And guys, I just sent you the link. And here's the link to the other article where he says about, did you effer? Did you effer? So this is uh, the beautiful language of your prophet, the beautiful example of your prophet. So number one, we establish he's a filthy mouth rapist. He had women raped, even married women. Did you see that? I did. Okay. Now, the other thing was pedophilia in Islam. You ready? Yes. Okay. Now, let me give you the article there. Watch here. I'm going to get you all. I'm going to get you this so then you can go to your scholar and say, hey, hey, uh, here. No, it doesn't mean that. But wait. Ibn Kathir. Qurtubi, Tabari, Ibn Abbas, they all say this is what it means. Oh, okay, well, you're not supposed to know it. Know it because Muhammad said, you're stupid. You know that, right? Mm, I, I didn't. You didn't know he said that about you? No. He said that you women are deficient in intelligence. It takes two of you women to equal one man. That's why the majority of you are in hell. Wow. <laughs> you didn't know that? I, I didn't. Like, I'm going to show <laughs> I want to show it to you. Okay. All right. I'm just let me go through this now. Here's another one. So go to the private chat, click on those links, save uh -huh. them. Okay. You can go back and then reference them okay. so that they don't say I'm lying. Right. So hold on. But here, he's quoting. Here's the, here. Chapter 65, verse 4 is talking about the waiting period of a woman who's been married and divorced. So in Islam, you know, if you've been married, but you haven't consummated, there is no idda, right? Do you know this or no? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. Let me show it to you. Okay. All right, here from the Quran, El Quran, El Karim. Uh, here you go. We'll use two translations. The idda is the weeding period, meaning, okay, I, I divorce you. You got to wait three months, three monthly cycles, three periods. Yeah, I heard that. But, I heard about that. But here, look what it says here. Chapter 33, verse 49. So you can see it with your own eyes. Because uh -huh. now tell me how you're going to follow this religion. Oh, ye who believe. If ye wed believing women and divorce them before you have touched them, then there is no period that you should reckon. So if I haven't touched you, after you know, engaged to you, do you have to wait? Do I have to wait? What does it say? It is. There is no period that you should reckon. But content them and release them handsomely. 
So do you have a waiting period in Idda if I'm contract to marry you, but I didn't sleep with you? No, right? Yeah. No. You see it, are you sure? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to look at Hilali Khan. Look to your right, Hilali Khan. Oh, you believe when you marry, believe women, and then divorce them before you have sexual intercourse with them, no idda have you to count respect of them. So give them a present, set them free. I divorce a man's matter. So you're engaged. The man doesn't have sex with you. You don't have to wait, right, if he divorces you? Yeah. But if you've had sex, then there's a waiting period of three monthly cycles but then they asked muhammad a question you know what the question they asked them no okay uh some of our women are menopause and then some of the women we marry are too young and they haven't had their periods what about them they wait three months here it is chapter 65 verse 4 and this is about the chapter of divorce and the case here i'll show it here but i'm going to go to the ark i'm going to give it to you uh, look at Hilary Khan. And those of your woman, chapter 65, verse 4, of your woman as have passed the age of monthly courses, meaning menopause. For them, the idda, prescribed period, if you have doubts about their periods, is three months. Count three months. Now watch here. And for those who have no courses, why? They haven't had their periods. They are still immature. Their idda is three months likewise. You understand what that means? Um... No. You want me to explain what it means? Yeah, no, go ahead, explain it. It's saying, all right, what if I marry a young girl, she hasn't had her periods, and no. I've had sex with her, I divorce her. How do I count her waiting period? Well, count three months. That's what it's saying right here again. Why do these girls have no courses here? And for those who have no courses, they are still immature. I married a young girl who haven't hasn't even had her period, and I had sex with her, but now I'm displeased with her. I divorce her. Let her wait three months for the next guy to marry her. Oh, wow. <laughs> Are you – let me let me give it practically. As we speak right now, there are children in Muslim countries. This is being done to them. It's not a theory. It's happening in Afghanistan. It's happening in Saudi Arabia. It's happening in predominant Muslim countries where – a girl as young as eight, she'll be married off, and a man will mount her and then deflower her, and then he can divorce her, and then someone else can do the same. Now, for the life of me, you have some moral decency. Would you be okay if, let's assume, you were living at time Muhammad. Muhammad attacked your village. He took your mother captive, your father's alive, and his men raped your mother and sold her off. Would you be okay with that? I wouldn't be okay with that. Would you be okay? They take your, let's say you have a six-year-old sister. Mm -hmm. And then a man says, I'm going to marry her. And if she can't handle penetration, then I'll play with her. But at nine, I'm going to penetrate and deflower her. No, that's not okay. But I that's an Islam. And that's what your prophet did to Aisha. Oh, wow. Yeah, I heard about that. Well, I'm gonna show you. I did some studies about that, and they were just saying how, oh, it's a different time period. She really wasn't really? young. She really wasn't young. So, uh, Go ahead. <laughs> show me. <laughs> I'm going to show you. So if I show you, it says she was playing with dolls and on swings. And she was, uh, she was playing with dolls because she hadn't reached puberty when Mama took her into his bed and mounted her. She was playing with dolls and on swings. I'm going to show it to you. But before I do that, let's see what the Muslim scholars say about this verse. Are you ready? Yeah. Here it is. And I gave you the link. Yeah. Here you go. Who's the example given of a woman who hadn't reached puberty that was then married? Okay. Who's the example given? You want to see? Yeah. Aisha. Yeah. Here it is. Yeah. You see it? Uh -huh. The Sabbath of Aisha Aisha Buley, chapter 6, book of Tafsir. It says the Tafsir of Surat. Talaq, meaning the chapter the of the Yeah. Mujahid said that if you have any doubt, 65 verse 4. That's the verse we read. If mm -hmm. you do not know whether she menstruates or not, the idda of women who do not longer menstruate and those who have not yet menstruated is three months. Right? Mm -hmm. And then now notice the example here. Again, Aisha Buli, Sal Bukhari, chapter 
70, book of marriage. Watch here. It's quoting 65.4, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what did here, what did this say in Bukhari? They don't menstruate. Why? Because they're young, right? Those who yeah. have not yet menstruated. Okay. Now, who's the example given here? The health applies to those who have not yet menstruated. And he made the idda of a girl, a girl before puberty, three months. And then here. It is related from Aisha that the prophet married her when she was six years old and consummated it when she was nine and she was his wife for nine years. If you see a 54-year-old man mounting a nine-year-old for nine years and then leaving her a widow where she can never marry again, you, do you believe this man is a prophet? Unfortunately, no. Then you just left Islam because that's what your prophet just did. That's where you read it. Bukhari. But now, here are the scholars on the meaning of 65.4. Here you go. Fath al-Bari from Ibn Hajar al-Askalani, who wrote the commentary in Sal Bukhari. Mm -hmm. Look here. And those who haven't menstruated yet, he made the waiting period three months for those who have menstruated yet, which indicates that giving her into marriage before puberty is permissible. You okay with that? No. So then you're no longer a Muslim. Now let me give you more commentaries. Now make sure you click on the link to the private and save it so that you can go to your scholar and say, wait, wait, look, here. What? Tafsir ibn Kathir. Okay. Allah the Exalted clarifies the waiting period of the woman in menopause. And that is the one whose menstruation has stopped due to her old age. See, she's old. So how long should she wait? She has no more periods. Her it does three months instead of three monthly cycles for her, those who menstruate which is based on the ayah in Al-Baqarah. The same for what? For the young who have not reached their menstruation. Oh, so your religion allows you to marry young girls who haven't menstruated. Interesting. Tafsir al-Jalalain. And this is online. These are all online. You mm -hmm. click on you go there, boom. It takes you right there, see? So I don't think we're lying. Tafsir al-Jalalain. And if you have any doubts about the waiting period, their prescribed period shall be three months. And what? Hold on. What does it say? Read that for me. And uh, for those who have not yet menstruated because of their young age. Why is Islam talking about young girls who haven't had their periods, being married, having a man to flower them and divorcing them, and they, they wait three more months to be remarried in case someone wants to marry them afterwards? Why is it even having this conversation? I honestly, I don't even have an answer. Exactly. Now here, this is attributed to Ibn Abbas. Some say, well, this is not Ibn Abbas, but it's attributed to him. Mm -hmm. Now watch the underlying portion. Right, just read. Can you read the underlying portion? Yeah. Um, what about the waiting period of those who do not have menstruation because they are too young? Along with those who have it not because of young age, their waiting period is three months. They're too young. They haven't had it. Instead of saying, well, don't touch them. They're not mature. No, you can still have sex with them and divorce them and let them wait three months to be remarried. And here, Asbab al-Nuzul by al-Wahdi, he's asked about the waiting period, all right? Muhammad is asked about the waiting period of the woman who is not yet menstruated, okay? Now look at here. What's the answer here? Um, he said, those who are too young such that they have not started menstruating yet. Hmm. Anyway, I'll read a few more, then I'm going to show you where Aisha was playing with dolls and on swings when Muhammad took her to his bed and mounted her. And I'm going to show you where Islam says, you can marry girls even younger than nine, but there's one condition. If they cannot handle penetration, then don't penetrate. But when they're nine, deflower them. That means, okay, sister, how old are you? I'm 21. Do you have an older brother? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Do you have a cousin that's in his 20s? Yes. A man? Okay. What would you say to your male cousin who takes a six-year-old to bed because Sharia allows it, six years old, and he takes her to his house as a wife, and yet because she can't handle penetration, he plays with her, with his male organ, until she's nine and then deflowers her? What would you say to your cousin? I'd be disgusted. I would want him put away. That's, well, that's religion. I didn't know any of this. Like I, I feel so light too. 
It's really well, hard. You have been lied to. Now I'll just give you Tafsir al Qurtubi, and there's a lot more, but anyway, because this is all you can read on them. Those who have not masrid yet, meaning the young girl, what's the word? As Sahira mean. Sahira means young. And that's the Arabic. Yeah. The young girl. That's why she hasn't menstruated. Anyway, you, you you can go and read it. It's all there. No one's lying. These are the Muslim sources, but yeah, no, I I see it right here. So now let me show you Aisha, and then I'm gonna show you what the Muslims say, Islam QA, Salafi website, on what the Sharia permits. It's not Simply their opinion. It's what the madahib, you know, the four schools of Islamic jurisprudence, Hanbali, Shafi, right? You have Malik, Maliki, all of them. Anyway, now watch here. Let me first go to sunnah.com. I'm going to go to sunnah.com. I only, all I need to do is Aisha and dolls. Bam. Boom. Aisha and dolls in the search engine. Bam. Look what pops up. Bam. Look at this. This is what? Sal Bukhari, Volume 8, mm -hmm. Hadith 151. Narin Aisha, I used to play with the dolls in the presence of the Prophet, and my girl friends also used to play with me. When Allah's Messenger used to enter my dwelling place, meaning the home that he gave to her after he married her, right? Mm -hmm. They used to hide themselves. You understand what she just told you? She was so young. That the young girls would come and play with her in her home. Young girls. When Muhammad would come in, they would hide because they're embarrassed. What is a grown man doing? <clears throat> Taking a young girl, putting her in a home, and then he visits her on a certain day to have sex with her. A young girl who's playing with dolls with her girlfriends. Well, let's finish it. They side themselves. But the prophet would call them to join and play with me. What does it say about a sicko, 54-year-old, seeing a young girl playing with other young girls, playing with dolls? And he said, no, no, go ahead, play with her. And then when they're done playing with her, they, they, they leave, and then he goes and mounts her in bed. Now watch here. The playing with the dolls and similar images is forbidden. You know, in Islam, you can't play with images. But why was it allowed for Aisha? Here. But it was allowed for Aisha at that time as she was a little girl, not yet reached the age of puberty. Don't let them lie to you and say she was mature. Okay. You caught it? Yeah, I, I see it. In yeah. front of you, right? Yep, it's there. Okay, well now, let me show you from Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim. Oh, this one is even from Al-Adab Al-Mufrad, which is, again, Al-Bukhari, Book 55, Hadith 1299, Sahih, right? Aisha reported, right? Mm -hmm. The Prophet used to call her companions to her who were playing with dolls. That's how young they were. She and her friends were playing with dolls. Now watch here. Let me show you. Okay, here. This one here. And I'm going to show it from Muslim. This comes again, Sahih. So then tell you, it's daif, it's weak. Sunan Nisai, volume 4, book 26, hadith 3380. It was narrated that Aisha said, the messenger of Allah married me when I was six and consummated marriage with me when I was nine and I used to play with dolls. What is a grown man at 54 doing, marrying a young girl, playing with dolls and deflowering her? I'm... I'm just so speechless right now. <laughs> exactly. And here it is, final one for this. And I'm going to show you what Islam says about pedophilia. This again is Sahih Muslim, Book 8, Hadith 3311. 3311. All you need to do is go to sunnah.com, put Aisha and dolls. That's it. Aisha, dolls. Mm -hmm. Look at the chapter. It is permissible for a father to arrange the marriage of a young virgin. Aisha reported Allah's apostle married her when she was seven years old. Because remember, these are lunar years. You know that, right? They're not solar years. So mm -hmm. she's anywhere from between six and seven. But those are lunar years. They don't go by the solar calendar. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a lunar calendar and she's around six lunar years, you know what that means? As far as the solar calendar me, uh, is concerned? No, I don't know. She's much younger. Wow. 
Allah, Aisha reported that Allah is supposed to marry her when she was seven years old. See, this guy got it. You see? The guy said, Lunar, wow. So you got it, right, brother? He got it. Brother Justin, you got it, right? God bless you. You're a sharp man. May the Lord use me to bless you. And may the Lord use you to glorify his name. See, he got it. Lunar years means she's actually much younger if you go by solar years. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Anyway. So now Aisha reported, uh, married her when she was seven years old, and he was taken to his house. She was taken, as supposed to be, to his house as a bride when she was nine, and her dolls were with her. And when he died, she was 18 years old. She went to a grown man's house, 54 years old, with her dolls. Wow. All right, now, Islamic pedophilia. I have, I'm going to give you this article. So here it is, and I'm going to go to the website itself. Islamic pedophilia. Here it is. I wrote this article. More on Islamic pedophilia. All right. This is here, but I'm going to go to the site itself, which I linked to from the article. So, guys, you know what to do. If you guys are listening, you should be taking these arguments, these articles, mastering them and sharing them on Discord, on TikTok, on Twitter, on PalTalk. Because you see, it's making an impact. This is what happened to this young lady. She heard these for the first time. She's rocked. Anyway, so now here you go. We click on, boom. Let me show you where I'm getting this from. So people say, oh, you're just lying. All right, here you go. Boom, here's the link. I click, on, I link to it in an article. Islam question and answer. General Supervisor, Sheikh Mohammed Saleh al Munajid. Does that sound Jewish or Christian to you? It sounds neither. Exactly. It's Muslim, so they can't say he's lying. He's a kafir. Right here. Islamic question right here. General supervisor. Now watch. On acting and the ruling on marrying young girls. Get ready to throw up, sister. You ready? Get, get ready to throw up? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, here you go. Right here. Secondly. Marrying a young girl before she reaches the age of adolescence is permitted in Sharia. Say what? This is a 21st century website. It's not saying, oh, that was in the past. Saying, no, right now it's permitted. Indeed, it was narrated that there was scholarly consensus on this point. I'll watch. What verse did they quote again? At the log. The one I just read, right? Yeah. And the one the Muslim scholars say, yeah, that means you can marry a girl before she reaches the age of adolescence. So don't let them lie to you. That's what they'll do. No, it doesn't mean that. Oh, so all these scholars got it wrong. You got it right. No, you're a liar, dude. That's what it is. And then notice with the example they're going to give you. And those of your women, as I pass the age of monthly courses, those of your women, as I pass the age of monthly courses, for them, the idda, if you have doubt, is three months. And though, and for those who have no courses, i.e., they are still immature, their idda is three months likewise. Now, what example do they give you? Watch here. In this verse, we see that Allah has made the idda, in the case of divorce of a girl, who does not have periods. Because why? What does she, it say? It says she's young and has not yet reached puberty. So I'm sure the Muslims lie to you, saying, no, Islam doesn't allow it. Alhamdulillah. Yes, it does. Three months. This clearly indicates that Allah has made this a valid marriage. So Islam says it is valid. To take a young girl who has not reached puberty, deflower her, and call it marriage. Now, who's the example? It was narrated from Aisha that the prophet married her when she was six years old. He consummated with her when she was nine, and she stayed with him for nine years. So who was the example again? Aisha. So why do they lie to us and say she had reached puberty? I can't answer that. Because they're lying. And they're ashamed. But now, yeah. this narrated by, by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. And then again, the prophet married Aisha when she was six years old and consummated her marriage when she was nine. Narrated by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Now, get ready to get sick. Muslim says seven years. You ready to get sick? Yeah. <laughs> the fact that it is permissible to marry a young girl does not mean that it's permissible to have intercourse with her. Now, why? Yeah, I can marry her if she's six, but it doesn't mean I can have sex with her. So what's the condition then? Watch the condition. Okay, now watch. Rather, that should not be done until she's able for it. What does it mean, able for it? For that reason, the prophet delayed the consummation of his marriage to Aisha. You see what it means right there? I, if you understood what this just yes. said, 
Yeah. So even if I married six, I don't have sex with her if she can't handle being deflowered. No. So why did Muhammad wait three years before he deflowered Aisha? Because that means ready. Say it again. She wasn't physically ready. Oh, so if he could have deflowered at six, he had to deflowered at six, huh? Mm. Read it again. You can marry a young girl, but not have intercourse until she's able for it. Able for what? Patty cake? No, able for it. So why did Muhammad not consummate the flower Aisha before nine? Because she couldn't handle it until she was nine. Wow. So what? What if she could handle at six? He would have then penetrated her. Oh wow. Yeah, this is not what I, I don't agree with this. This is wrong. <laughs> okay, well, you're no longer a Muslim. Well, let me finish it because I, and then I can show you adoption. Another thing. And by the way, another thing Muhammad allowed that the Sunni say is abrogated, the Shia say no. Zawaj al-Mutah, pleasure, pleasure marriage. You know what that is? I don't know what that is, actually. I never heard of that. Okay, now you're going to get shocked because Muhammad allowed it, but then the Sunnis say he abrogated it. The Shia said it was never abrogated. Did you know that Muhammad allowed men to go and ask here? What would you say to him if I say, hey, young lady, I want to marry you for three days and divorce you and pay you after I'm done? I would say no. Why? Well, why, why would you not want to accept that marriage? Because it's like wrong. You're just going to pay me to, to do it. Like, it's just well, I'm marrying you, right? And I'll divorce you and pay you. No. What is that called, to pay someone? A prostitute. Muhammad did that. He told his people, go find a woman, marry her temporarily for three days or less, and pay her when you divorce her. Wow. You know the Shia say, to this day, the Shia say, it's halal, it's not Abrogated. There's a debate among Sunnis and Shia. Go. Do you don't believe me? Go to Google Shia and Muta. And Muta. Yeah. Here. Let me show it to you. There. You go here. Google here. Chef Google, the greatest scholar ever lived. Shia Muta. Okay. Here. Boom. Nikah Muta. Mm. According to Shia Muslims, Muhammad sanctioned Nikah Muta, called Muta in Iraq and site in Iran. And then there are Muslim websites. Uh, Shia websites, I should say. Here. There you go. Four pillars of Muta. This is a Shia website telling you the four pillars allowing temporary marriage. You see what the title is? What is it? Yeah. It says four pillars of Muta. Muta temporary marriage in Islamic law. Okay. So this is the belief of Shia. They say it has not been abrogated. Mm -hmm. The Sunnis will tell you, yes, muta was allowed, but it's abrogated. That means both religions are admitting, both religions are admitting that Muhammad allowed prostitution, calling it pleasure marriage. One says it's been abrogated. Here, this is Sheikh Asim al-Hakim. He's a Sunni, and he says it's been abrogated. So the Shia are wrong. So let's see what he says. Let's see what he says here. Okay. Let's play it. I can't sign up here. Maybe I can't do it here. Let's just go back here. Um, yes. I can it. You can play it? Yeah, I can go ahead. But, I, I, but I'd have to screen share. I'll find it. I'll find it here. Oh, okay. Because what I'll do here, because I want to go here, video. Okay, here we go. TikTok video exposing, exploring Muta marriage. Let's see. Hold on one second. Maybe I can do it. I'll figure it out. I'm not as smart, dumb as I look. Oh. Muta marriage, it was in the beginning permitted for a certain period of time here then on the seventh year of here yeah i heard it one more time guys watch here hijrah the year of khaybar the prophet والسلام, prohibited it on the day of khaybar the prophet والسلام, got up and made an announcement that allah has revealed to me that this type of marriage is prohibited from this day on what was the type of marriage this was known as nikah al muta English. Did you hear it? Nikah al-Muta. So these are Sunnis saying he allowed it 
but then he abrogated it. That means your prophet allowed women to be treated as whores, then abrogated. But the Shia say no, it's still allowed. This translation of mm -hmm. Sahih Muslim. If you look at Hadith 3420, it was narrated. That his By the way, the one who's speaking, he's a Shia. He's a Shia okay. scholar. Okay. What the Shia scholar is showing you is that the Sunnis are inconsistent because the Sunni sources say that mutah was not abrogated by Muhammad. Okay. And he's so giving saying, them... So say again? That Muhammad never said that. They're saying it hasn't been abrogated because oh. they're going to quote Sunni sources. Sai Muslim saying he allowed it. Here. he's. This is a Shia speaking. Okay. Went out with the message of Allah to conquer Mecca. Everybody at home, the conquering of Mecca was after the battle of Khaybar. He said we stayed there. Where? Mecca. For 15... Th to 30 between night and day and the message of allah gave us permission to engage in mut'a marriages with women that means anyone who tells you mut'a is the marriage of the shia body in your books wallah it's all there see that that's a shia mm -hmm. one more time guys remember youtube fair use copyright law allows me to use clips for educational purposes mut'a marriage it was in the beginning permitted for a certain period of time. Then on the seventh year of Hijrah, the year of Khaybar, the Prophet ﷺ prohibited it. On the day of Khaybar, the Prophet ﷺ got up and made an announcement that Allah has revealed to me that this type of marriage is prohibited from this day on. What was the type of marriage? This was known as Nikah al -Muta'a. English translation of Sahih Muslim. If you look at Hadith 3420, it was narrated that his father went out with the message of Allah to conquer Mecca. Everybody at home, the conquering of Mecca was after the battle of Khaybar. He said we stayed there. Where? Mecca. For 15 th to 30 between night and day. And the message of Allah gave us permission to engage in mut'a marriages with women. That means anyone who tells you mut'a is the marriage of the Shia body. In your books, wallah, it's all there. <laughs> okay, so you understand what he's saying, right? The Shia, we say it's still lawful, but you Sunnis are dishonest. You're saying it's been abrogated. No, it hasn't, but you understand that means even the Sunnis are admitting your prophet allowed women to be treated as whores. Wow. <laughs> I, I never heard of that. It's okay, right but... Now. So now let me finish. Let me finish the rest of this post and we can talk about adoption. But you pretty much have left Islam because you pretty much see that Muhammad was a disgusting, disgusting woman prostituting, woman raping, adulterous, misogynist, pedophile. Your mic is really bad. Sorry. Okay, can just can you hear now? You're okay? Yeah, I'm good. I can hear you. Okay. Now, let's finish it now. Watch here. Why did Muhammad not consummate marriage with Aisha before nine? Because she couldn't handle penetration, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to come start here. El Nawawi said, with regard to the wedding party of a young married girl at the time of consummating the marriage, if the husband and the guardian of the girl agree upon something that will not cause harm to the young girl, then that may be done. In other words, her guardian, whether a father or someone, mm -hmm. And I say, look, you can take her home, marry her, but don't penetrate if she can't handle it. Because if it harms her, don't don't penetrate. Okay. Wow. If they disagree, now watch. Then Ahmed and Abu Ubay, you may have to mute yourself. Your mic, mic is bad. This is very bad. Mute yourself. And only unmute when I ask you. All right. Now, if they disagree, then Ahmed and Abu Ubay say, that once a girl reaches age of nine, then the marriage may be consummated even without her consent. But that does not apply in the case of who is younger. So understand what is being said. Nine, you can then consummate it. Why? Because Aisha was nine. Even if she doesn't consent, doesn't matter. Even without her consent. But before that, you got to get her consent. Malik, Shafi, or Shafi, 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 Abu. Hanifa, Abu Hanifa, said the marriage may be consummated when the girl is able for intercourse, which varies from one girl to another, so no age limit can be set. Damn, you cannot say, no, she's got to be 12. She can be 6, 7 if she can handle it. 
This is what? The correct view. There is nothing in the Hadith of Aisha to set an age limit or to forbid that in the case of a girl who is able for it before the age of nine. Damn. Or to allow it in the case of a girl who is not able for it and, and has reached age of nine. Al Dawoodi said Aisha was reached physical machine, meaning she could handle penetration at that age. Now you can unmute yourself. Do you see it? I do. Is this better? I um Yeah, it's better now. Okay. I'll let you know it's better. But you understand what it says here? One more time. If a girl is younger than nine and she can handle it, or to forbid, then in the case of a girl who's able for it before the age of nine, you can't forbid it. Oh. <clears throat> you got it? Yeah, I see I can it. I hear myself through your computer. So mute. if you're on YouTube, mute it. Get off YouTube. Just. I'm not on YouTube. Okay, because I can hear myself. Now I don't hear it. Okay. But you get it now, right? I do. So I've established your prophet sanctioned pedophile, which is why to this day, to this day, you find you're going to meet yourself, sister. It's not bad. You have a genie in your uh, mute yourself and unmute yourself when I ask you. Yeah, the genie is following you. He's upset. Muhammad's genies, they're after you. So this is Islam. Now, do you want me to show you how adoption was canceled by Muhammad and why? Yes. Okay, the final one. All right. All right, here, let me get you the article on this too. So people don't think I'm making it up. Here it is. Muhammad Zainab. All righty, the hey Zina, but I can Let me just do it here. Let me find it. Uh, here you go. Muhammad's adulterous lust for a married woman. Muhammad's adulterous lust for a married woman. All right, here you go. For the rest of you, and I just sent it to you in private. Now, for the rest of you, I sent, I put it in. Common here. Okay. Where did I get this from? So people don't think I'm making this up. Okay. I quote the context is chapter 33, verse 37. Remember when you said to him, Zayed bin Haditha, the freed slave of the Prophet, on whom Allah bestowed grace, and you, O Muhammad, have done favor. He favored him by setting him free. Keep your wife to yourself and fear Allah. Now, understand. What does verse saying? Muhammad told Zayed. Zayed told Muhammad, I want to divorce my wife Zainab. Muhammad said, no, 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 no. Keep her if you're Allah. So Allah is saying, look what Allah is saying to Muhammad. But you did hide in yourself. Muhammad, you were hiding in your heart what Allah has already made known to you, that he will give her to you in marriage, that which Allah will make manifest. You did fear the people. Muhammad married the divorced wife of his manumitted slave. Whereas Allah had a better right that you should fear him. Now understand what it's saying. Muhammad, we made known to you and you hid that we had decreed that she's going to be your wife. Who? Zayed's wife. But Zayed's your adopted son. So you're ashamed of the fact that if you divorce and you married her, people would mock you. But you should fear Allah more than men. Do you understand that? Yeah, I see it. Does that disgust you? Unfortunately, it, it does. Allah is saying to Muhammad, Allah is saying to Muhammad, why are you hiding in your heart what we made known to you? That Zayed's wife is yours. We decreed her for you. So he's going to divorce her. You're going to marry her. Why are you afraid of people in the backlash? You need to fear Allah more. Now watch this. It's going to get worse. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when Zayed had accomplished his desire from her, we gave her to you in marriage so that the future, now why? Why did Allah allow Muhammad to marry her? Okay, watch. Look at this. That there may be no difficulty to the believers in respect of the marriage of the wives of their adopted sons when the latter have no desire to keep them, i.e. they have divorced them. Do you understand how sick this religion is? Do you understand what it says here? Yeah, I, I do. So can you imagine Allah saying, Muhammad, we're going to set you as an example. You're going to marry your adopted son's divorced wife so that you can be an example for others to do likewise. So if I have adopted son and he married a woman, she's my daughter-in-law. 
But when he divorces her, I can marry and have sex with her. So that means my adopted, my adopted son's wife now becomes a stepmother. So he now has to look at a stepmother whom he had sex with, whom he saw naked, and respect her as his mother. Wow. Now, picture yourself. You're married to a Muslim man. Mm -hmm. He's been adopted. The, the father is not his biological father, his adopted father. Then mm -hmm. the man divorces you, and then he marries you and has sex with you. How uncomfortable would that be for you to now be the stepmother of the man who had sex with you? Very uncomfortable. But that's what your God, Allah, did. But now watch how filthy it gets. Now, so people say, you're lying. This is No, no, I'm not. Because here, who's who? Who? Muqattal bin Suleiman al-Tafsir. These are all Muslim sources. Volume 3, pages 492 and 494. I'm just going to read two of them. You got the article. You can read all of them. Okay. And there's Yasir Qadi. He's done a lecture. Yasir Qadi. Let me see if I can find it before I go on. On this marriage of Zayd and Zainab, and he admits that the earliest commentators, including Tabari, say that Muhammad lusted for her, a married woman, and he desired her, but he tried to hide his lust for a married woman who was his daughter-in-law. Let me show you. Guys, focus, please, in the comment section. You can learn. So you do your part in saving Muslims by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here. Yasir Kadi Zayed Zainab. Let's see what pops up. Yes, you put in Yasir Kadi Zayed Zainab. The prophet's marriage to Zainab. Go listen to what he says. It's right there. And he admits it. He admits it right here. Sira, part 68. He will admit it. It's one thing I like about this guy. He's not embarrassed to admit the filth of his prophet, but he tries to then justify it right here. Wow. Okay, now let's go back here. You ready to get sick? Muqattal bin Suleiman Tafsir, volume 3, pages 492, 494. Now watch it. Only after some time, Zayd complained to the prophet regarding what he had suffered with Zayd. Now, by the way, you want to hear even what's even stupider? What? You know who forced Zainab to marry Zayd? Who? Muhammad. Wow, really? Yes, that's chapter 33, verse 36 of the Quran. And you read the commentators. Muhammad told Zainab, because she was his cousin, marry Zayd. She didn't want to. He goes, you cannot disagree with me because what Allah and I decree, you must obey. Wow. So here's a man who forces his cousin, Zainab, to marry Zayed, his adopted son. She didn't want to. Then he lusts for her, making him divorce her so then he can marry and have sex with her. What the hell is going on with this religion? Wow. Yeah, I ain't lying. It's chapter 33, verse 36, the verse before this. But anyway, let's go on. Okay, the prophet came to them and admonished her here. And while he talked to her, I, I got it. There's a typo here. I got a kick. He de developed what? Now notice, when he was admonishing her, he did what? Developed likeness for her beauty, countenance, and wit. It happened as who decreed it? Allah. Allah. Why is your God Allah causing Muhammad to lust for a married woman committing adultery in his heart? I can't answer that. Exactly. Let's finish it. The prophet then returned and handed his thought what Allah had willed. So saying, he went started thinking what Allah wanted him to think, desiring the married woman. Thereafter, the prophet asked to how had he been with her. He then he told Zayed, Zay, uh, Zayed, what's going on? He again complained about her. The prophet said, fear Allah and keep your wife with you. While he had in his heart something else. In other words, he was lying. He told him, keep your wife, even though he wanted his wife. This is a Muslim saying this. Muqattal bin Suleiman. Volume 3, pages 419. This is not a Christian or a Jew. Mm -hmm. You guys getting it, everyone? Are you listening? Now watch. The prophet then came to Zayn and saw Zainab as she was standing. She was beautiful, fair complexion, and among the best women creation. Therefore, the prophet felt an inclination for her. And while leaving, said, praise be to Allah who turns the hearts. Did you catch it? 
he saw her without a veil and he turned and he, she heard him say, glory be to Allah who turns hearts, meaning glory be to Allah who turns hearts, making a person desire another. She heard it. So then Zayed discerned and said, oh, my son, Allah, allow me to divorce her for she has haughtiness and arrogant with me and her language also hurts me. Now, see, so he said, all right, it's okay. I'll divorce her because we don't get along. You can have her. Now, I'm going to tell you the story of Zayd in a minute. The prophet said, hold on to your wife and fear Allah. Zayd, however, eventually divorced her. Now, here another one. I'm not going to go through all of it. There's a lot. Al-Tabri, Jami al-Bayyin fi tafsir al-Quran. Tabri is considered one of the greatest. Volume 20, page 274. Okay? There's too many to read. I gave you the article. You can go read them. I'm just going to read this. According to Yunus bin Abdul Ala ibn Wahab ibn Zayd, who said the messenger of God had married Zayd bin Haritha to Zainab bin Jash, his paternal aunt's daughter. Did you catch it? Mm -hmm. Paternal aunt, the sister of his father. This was his aunt's daughter. So he forced Zainab to marry Zayd. One day the messenger of God went out looking for Zayd. Now there was a covering of hair cloth over the doorway. But the wind had lifted the covering so that the doorway was uncovered. Zainab was in her chamber undressed. And admiration for her entered the heart of the prophet. You see this dirty pervert? Mm -hmm. He's starting to lust for his daughter-in-law, the wife of his adopted son. After that happened, she was made unattractive to the other man. So Allah made her dislike Zayid when she found out Allah, uh, Allah's messenger lusted for her. So he came and said, Messenger of God, I want to separate myself from my companion. Because Zayed is upset. She don't find me attractive. She doesn't desire me. Mm -hmm. I'm done with her. Muhammad asked, what is wrong? Has anything on her part disquieted you? No, by God, replied Zayed. So no, no, no. She's a good woman. Nothing she has done has disquieted me, Messenger of Allah. Nor have I seen anything but good. Mm -hmm. You understand Zayed's love for Muhammad, his adopted father, was greater than his love for his wife, and he's willing to give up his wife so Muhammad could have her. The messenger of God said to him, keep your wife to yourself and fear God. That is the meaning of the word of God. And when you said unto him, on whom God has conferred favor, and you have conferred favor, keep your wife to yourself and fear God. And you did hide in your mind that which God was to bring to light. In other words, you did hide in your mind the thought that if he separates himself from her, I will marry her. You see how dirty Muhammad is? Mm -hmm. He was hiding in his heart that, man, if my son divorces her, I'm going to jump on her. Wow. Okay, now guess what happened then? Because yeah. of the backlash and people making fun of Muhammad, mm -hmm. you know what he did? What? He ended, he ended a, a adoption. Now let me give you the story before I show you the verses. Okay. Zayd bin Haritha was a slave. He was taken captive, sold into slavery. He was the possession of Khadija bin Khuwaylid. This is all according to Muslim sources. If you don't know who Khadija bin Khuwaylid is, she's the first wife of Muhammad. Yeah. She was 40 and Muhammad was around 25 years old. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And she was actually Muhammad's boss. She hired him to lead the caravans because she was a successful financial businesswoman. In other words, she was a sugar mama. You want me there? Oh, wow. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is good. Go ask your chef. Don't take my word. Hey, chef, was Khadija bin Khuwaylid, did she was she a wealthy merchant woman who hired Muhammad to sell and trade for her? Yes. All right. Now, when Muhammad married her, Zayd became a slave. Now, Around the year 605 A.D. I want you to listen to this. And I'm going to give you the references. 605 A.D. Five years before Muhammad supposedly saw the angel Gabriel. 605 A.D. <clears throat> Zayed's father and his father's brother found out that Zayed was in Mecca. So they came to emancipate him. They came to set him free. Mm -hmm. He had been kidnapped. So when Zayd's father heard, hey, your son is in Mecca, he's a slave. Zayd's father and his father's brother went looking for him. They found Muhammad and said, look, we want to release, you release our son to us and we're willing to pay whatever it costs. Muhammad said, well, he's free to go. If he wants to go, you can go. You don't need to pay me. So then the Muslim sources say Zayd came and then Muhammad said, here's your father. 
Here's your father's brother, your uncle. What say you? Do you want to go with them? According to the Muslim sources, look at the man's love for Muhammad. Zayed says, I'd rather be the servant of Muhammad than be set free. Muhammad was shocked. He goes, you know what? This day, I emancipate you. You're no longer my slave. You are my son. So it says he went before the Kaaba and he announced everyone, Zayed is no longer a slave. He is my son. Mm -hmm. From that moment on, they called Zayed the son of Muhammad. Yeah. Now fast forward, Medina, years later, this is how Muhammad repays his son for the loyalty he showed to him. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. You catch it, right? Yeah, I do. But now it gets worse. Now it's going to get bad. Now it's going to get bad. Watch here. Look what Islam does to adoption. You ready? Mm -hmm. 33 verse 4 and 5 Chapter 33 verse 4 and 5 Then I'm going to read Ibn Kathir Allah has not put for any man two hearts inside his body Neither has he made your wives Whom you declare to be like your mother's backs Your real mothers Because when a man didn't like his wife He goes you're like my mother's back Meaning I treat you like my mother So I'm not going to touch you Yeah. As zihad Is the saying of a husband to his wife You are to me like the back of my mother I, you are unlawful for me to approach. So Allah is saying, stop doing that. Now watch this part. Nor has he made your adopted sons your real sons. That is what you're saying with your mouths. But Allah says the truth and he guides to the right way. So if they're not our sons, what do we do? Call them, your adopted sons, by the names of their fathers. That is more just with Allah. But if you know not their father's names, call them your brothers in faith. They're not your sons. You're freed slaves. Stop saying they're your sons. They're your brothers. There's no sin on you if you make a mistake therein, except in regard to what your hearts deliberately intend. And Allah is ever off forgiving, most merciful. So you caught it here? Yeah. But sister, I'm a little confused. Let me show you why. Watch here. It says they're no longer your adopted sons, right? Mm -hmm. Stop calling them that, right? Nor has he made your adopted sons your real sons. Call them by the names of their fathers, the son of their fathers. But if you don't know who they are, their fathers, then they're your brothers and your freed slaves. So Zayed is no longer a son of Muhammad. It's he's his brother, right? Yeah. But did, weren't we told in the same chapter the reason why Allah gave Zainab to Muhammad here? Watch. We gave her to you in marriage so that in future there may be no difficulty to the believers in respect of the marriage of the wives of their adopted sons. When the latter have no desire to keep them. Now I'm confused. Here we're told Muhammad married his adopted son's divorced wife to be an example for other people to do the same with the with their adopted son's divorced wives, right? Mm -hmm. But Allah abolished adoption later on. So how in the hell could this be an example for future adoptive fathers when Allah knows he's going to cancel adoption altogether? Yeah. Okay, uh, you understand my dilemma here, right? If I say, hey, I see it. Yeah. I married my adopted son's divorced wife, so I can be an example for all of you. You guys, when your adopted sons divorce their wives, you can marry them. Wow, excellent. And then a couple of weeks later, I say, oh, abolish, adoption is abolished. No more adoption. They're not your sons. But wait, 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 hold on. A couple weeks ago, you took your adopted son's divorced wife, yeah, as an example for us. But now you abolish adoption. So why the hell did you take her when your God knows there'll be no more adoption so that the example you set is null and void and is meaningless? Yeah. You got it? But now let yeah. me show you. Ibn Kathir says, now you're gonna, you're really gonna get sick. What would you say to a man who says to you, because you have an let's say you have an adopted son, okay? Mm -hmm. He's now a young man, he's in his teenage years, but he's your adopted son, so he's a mahram, right? Mm -hmm. But now I abolish adoption, he's no longer your adopted son, meaning no, he's no longer a mahram, he's no longer 
a son. He's no longer one of those forbidden relationships. And therefore, your husband is now uncomfortable with him in the house because he's not our son. And then I say, hey, hey, you want me to solve this? Because either you got to throw him out because he can't stay with you, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the solution. Now watch the solution. Tell your former adopted son to suck your tit 10 times, breastfeed him, and he becomes your son by breastfeeding. And now he's mahram again. What? That's what Muhammad did. What? I want to show it to you. I'm going to show it to you. Okay. Now I want to ask you, you're 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 not you're obviously convicted and you're intelligent. Mm -hmm. If a teenager whose hormones are in overdrive mm -hmm. sees a woman who's not his mother, sees her breast, her tit, and he sucks on it, you think that's gonna cure him of lust? No. And yet Muhammad told the woman that you're about to read to do that. Here, watch. You seem like you're very troubled today, sister. Yeah, like I I didn't know any of this. Like nothing. Like this is all new to me. Exactly. Now watch here. Here it is. In fact, here. Tafsir Ibn Kathir on Adam.org. This is not a Jewish or Christian website. No, it's here not. It is for you. So you can find it here. I'm giving it to all of you guys here. Now watch. Watch here. Okay. So there it is for the rest of you. Now let's go to it. We're going to go to chapter 33. Okay, chapter 33. Boom, we go here. Let's go here, 33. Where is it? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong one. I'm so stupid. I'm not even looking at the right one. I passed it up. I'm sorry. I was looking at the juice, not the, you know. Now watch here. Okay. Now here, boom, you click. And if you guys want to find the ayat, you go to verses 4 and 5. Boom. Bam, so you don't think I'm lying. Did Allah abolish adoption? Yep, here it is. And now notice the example of a woman who's told by Muhammad, give this man your tit to suck. Okay, there he is. So guys, click on it. Let's read. So let's go here. So adoption. Here you go. Abolish, abolition of adoption. Do you see it right here? Yes, I see it. So am I lying? No, it's there. Um, sorry, let's go back again. Sorry. Sometimes my computer acts up. Ab abolition of adoption. Before Allah discusses ideas and theoretical matters, he gives tangible examples. One man cannot have two hearts in his body, <clears throat> and a man's wife does not become his mother if he says the words of zihar to her. You are to me like the back of my mother. I'm writing right here. By the same token, an adopted child does not become the son of the man who adopts him and calls him his son. Allah says, Allah is not made for any man two hearts in his <clears throat> inside his body. Neither has he made your wives, whom you declare to be like your mother's backs, your own mothers. This is like the ayah. <clears throat> they cannot be their mothers, nor can none can be their mother except those who gave them birth. Mm -hmm. Nor has he made, here's the part, your adopted sons, your own sons. Now watch. This was revealed concerning who? Zaid. Zaid bin Haditha, right? Mm -hmm. The freed servant of the Prophet. He just gave it away. Why did Allah abolish adoption? Because of Zaid. Why because of Zaid? Because the people were saying, what kind of man is this? He took his adopted son's wife. What a filthy, immoral pig. Allah says, all right, I'm ending adoption. Zaid's no longer his son. Mm-hmm. This was revealed concerning Zayd bin Haditha, the freed servant of the Prophet. The Prophet had adopted him before prophethood, and he was known as what? Zayd bin who? Muhammad. Allah wanted to put an end to this name and attribution. He said, nor has he made your adopted sons your real sons. This is similar to the ayah later in the surah. Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but he's the messenger of Allah and the last of the prophets. And Allah is ever aware... And Allah says here, that is but your saying with your mouths, meaning your adoption of him is just words. It does not mean that he's really your son, for he was created from the loins of another man, and a child cannot have two fathers, just as a man cannot have two hearts in one body. Okay, now I'm, I'm confused a little bit. It says, 
that they're not your real sons, right? Yeah. How is it that when a woman lets me suck her tit, I somehow become her son? There's the logic of Islam here. You know what it is. It's breastfeeding. Rida, yeah. right? Rida. Yeah. You know people who've been breastfed, so they're like, if a woman breastfed you and she breastfed her own son, now you and her son are unlawful, right? That's Islam. Oh, wow. It's, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a, that's relationship established by breastfeeding because Islam allows that. So if we follow Muhammad's logic, Adoption doesn't make someone really your son. They're only the son of their biologic fathers, but sucking a woman's tit makes me her son. Okay, now, <laughs> now watch the example, though. Now it's going to get bad. Zayd bin Jubair said, but Allah says the truth means justice katada. Now watch. And he guides to the way means a straight path. Iman Ahmed said that Hassan told him, the Zuhair told him, from Qabus, meaning Ibn Abi Zibyan, that his father told him, I said to him, Ben Amas, do you know the ayah? Allah is not made for any man two hearts inside his body. What does this mean? He said that the messenger of Allah stood, on, stood up one day to pray, and he trembled. The hypocrites who were praying with him said, do you not see that he has two hearts, one heart with you and another with them? Then Allah revealed the words. Now watch here. Allah is not made for any man two arts inside his body. This was narrated by Tirmidhi, who said it is Hassan Hadith. It was also narrated by Ibn Jarir and Ibn Ibn Hatim from the Hadith of Zuhair. Now watch here. An adopted child should be named after his real father. All right. Now get look how bad it's going to get. Call them adopted sons by their fathers. That is more just with Allah. This is a command which abrogates, cancels the state of affairs that existed at the beginning of Islam. When it's permitted to call adopted sons after the man who adopted them. Now, look at the genius of Allah. He now cancels out a humane institution. Adopting children who may have been abandoned, whose parents may have died, making them your own children, giving them a home, <clears throat> loving them as your own, so they can have now a couple to look to as parents. Wipe that out. But allow raping married captive women and allow pedophilia. How does that work? It doesn't work. <laughs> so why does God, if he's the true God, Allah of the Quran, who's all merciful, abolish a humane institution where couples who can't have children can adopt or orphans can be adopted and loved? Abolish that but sanction pedophilia and the raping of married women who have been taken captive. Or even women who are not married. This looks like Satan more than it looks like the God revealed in Jesus. But let's let's continue. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's admitting that adoption was there before Muhammad. And Muhammad destroyed it. And Allah commanded that they should be given back the names of their real fathers. And states that this was more fair and just. Al-Bukhari narrated that Abdullah bin Omar said, Zayd bin Haritha, the freed servant of the Messenger of Allah, was always called what? Zayd bin Muhammad. Always, right? Mm -hmm. And then the Quran was revealed, and then that stopped. Call them adopted sons by the names of their fathers. That is more just with you. Now, get ready to throw up with me, right? Okay. This was also narrated by Muslim, Tirmidhi, and Nasai. Nasai. They used to deal with them as sons in every respect. So they treat them as their own sons, including being alone with them as mahrams and so on. Now, guys, for those of you who don't know what a mahram is, guys, pay attention. For those of you who don't know what a mahram is, in Islam, women cannot be alone with people whom they can marry and have sex with. Women can only be alone with people who cannot have sex with them. Those are called forbidden to them for sexual intimacy. So the father is mahram. He's forbidden. A father cannot sleep with his daughter. Her brother is mahram, right? But cousins, no. Friends, no. Strangers, no. So this young lady, if she's in a Muslim home, and it's a traditional Muslim home, her father can be with her. Her brothers can be with her. Her uncles can be with her. But even cousins can't be in the house if she's there. She has to go to a separate room. And friends and 
Others can't be in her presence. She can't be in their presence. Am I exaggerating? No. So here it was saying that when they had adopted children, the adopted children could be in the presence of the women because you cannot have sex with a son. However, Muhammad abolished adoption. Let me enlarge it a little more. So what happens? So watch here. They used to deal with them as sons in every respect, including being alone with them as mahrams and so on. Now watch. Here it is. Hence, Sahla bin Suhail, <clears throat> the wife of Abu Hudhaifa, right, mm -hmm. said, Oh, Master Allah, we used to call Salim our son. See, they had adopted son, right? Yeah. When Allah has revealed what he's revealed. Okay, now he's not my son. He's not Abu Hudayfa's son. He cannot be in my presence. But when he was our son, he could enter upon me. He used to enter upon me. But I feel that Abu Hudayfa does not like that. Now what are we going to do? We adopted him. Now you put us in a situation, Muhammad. So look at Muhammad's solution. You ready? Yeah. The prophet said, Sorry, again, Satan distracting. Father, rebuke the evil one. Lord Jesus, rebuke the evil one. Holy Spirit, rebuke the evil one and seal us and bring this woman to the true God revealing the Christ. The prophet said, breastfeed him and he'll become your mahram. Say what? Breastfeed him. Hence, when this ruling was abrogated, when this ruling was abrogated, Allah made it permissible for a man to marry the ex-wife of his adopted son. So he abrogated that because there's no more adoption. The Messenger of Allah married Zainab bin Jash, the divorced wife of Zayed bin Haditha, right? As Allah said. Okay. Did you see the solution? Here's a grown man. She's not going to say, come here. Here, suck my tit, my nipple. Why? Because you're going to be my son by breastfeeding. And at that time, it took 10 sucklings. What would you do if you saw your mother take out her tit, her breast, and allow someone to suck it 10 times to make him her adopted uh, her son by breastfeeding not adoption a grown grown man or a teenager i wouldn't allow it but muhammad did sister i, I if after this you don't see why muhammad is from the pit of hell and in hell and islam is from from satan i don't know what to tell you because i just showed you how immoral this man is yeah, no, I, I've seen, I saw. So, I just feel very lied to, like, my whole life. Say it again. I feel very lied to. Exactly, you have been. These are things they hide from you. Oh, by the way, I want to show you where Muhammad says you're stupid? Yeah, I actually do want to see that. Oh, and also, do you want, to, you want me to show you where Muhammad says you are a man's field and he can plow into you the way he wants? Yeah. They never show you that verse either? I know nothing of anything. Here it is. This is how what Allah thinks of you. Here you go. This is what Allah thinks of you. You ready? Mm -hmm. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 223. Here you go. Your wives are a tilth for you. Tilth means a field. Your wives are a tilth for you. So go to your tilth. Now, the... Comment, comments in parentheses, not part of the Arabic. Just to prove it to you, I'm going to give you another translation. Okay. Your women are a tillage for you, so come unto your tillage as you wish, and forward for your souls, and fear God, and know that you shall meet him. Give thou good tidings to the believers. Do you like the fact that Allah said that you are a tilth, a field that a man can plow into because he can do it when he wants because you're his field? No. But that's what the religion just said. It's right here. Your wives are a tilt for you. Your women are a tillage. Tillage means your field that you plow into. So go into your wives the way you want. Now, you want me to show you the supposed reason for this revelation? Yeah. There you go. Then I'll show you where it says you're stupid. Altafsir.org. Oh, what happened? That'll work? Let's see. Well, it better work. If not, then it's all right. It's all good enough. There it goes. Okay, let's enlarge it. I'm going to give you the link. Watch here. So you go here. 
And I'm going to give you the link in a minute, but I'm going to go to Asbab al Nuzul al Wahdi. There you go. I'm going to give you the link. La 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 la. All right, two, two, three. Let's go here. What's here? There you go. All right, display. Now, here's the link for you. This is what Allah thinks of you. Ready? Now he's, I'm going to put in private chat. This is what Allah thinks of you. I want you to see how merciful Allah is to you, how much he likes you. All right, there you go. All right, guys. Guys, focus, all right, so you can learn how to expose Islam. Your women are a till for you. Now he's going to give you the isna, the chain. Abu Bakr Ahmed ibn Hussain, and la, 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 la. Anyway. Jabir ibn Abdullah said, now watch here. I'm about to laugh. The Jews used to say that whoever penetrates the vagina of his wife from a back position, the child born as a result of this intercourse will be cross-eyed. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. Okay. So the Jews say, hey, hey, don't have sex from behind. Don't do it from behind. Your kid's going to come out cross-eyed. To deny this, Allah exalted, is he, revealed your women are a tilt for you to cultivate. So go to your tilt as you will. Hey, man, don't listen to them. You can do what you want. Plow into them. And by the way, you cannot say no. Do you know that? I'm going to prove to you. You're going to read here. This was narrated by Bukhari from Abu Nuaym and by Muslim from Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shayba. And Abu Nuaym and Abu Bakr related from Sufyan. Now, again, here's this sunnah. Muhammad bin Ibrahim, la, 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 la. Under Ibn Abbas, okay, here, Mujahid. Who said, I read the Quran out of memory from beginning and under Ibn Abbas, that's Muhammad's first cousin, mm -hmm. three times, stopping at each verse to ask him about its meaning until he got to this verse. Your women are a tilth for you to cultivate, so go to your tilth as he will. He said, The men of this part of Quraysh, the men of this part of Quraysh used to have sexual intercourse with their wives while the latter lay down on their front. What a filthy, sick religion that a lot of what it has to say. Is about sex. Mm -hmm. I mean, Daka, is this what occupies the minds of these perverts? So notice the men of Quraysh would have sex with their wives lying on their back. They enjoyed their wives from the front and back positions. When they when they migrated to Medina and married the women of the helpers. Now remember, women of Quraysh were used to men plowing them from behind or front, right? Mm -hmm. But the women of Medina. We're only used to one position. So when the Muslims from Mecca went to the women of Medina, married some of them, watch. They tried to do with them what they were in the habit of doing in Mecca. But the women helpers had rejected. No, no, hey, hey, hey. Don't turn me around. You only do it one way. Mm -hmm. This is something with, that we did not do before. So like, respect me. We don't do this this way. What did Allah say? The talk spread until it reached the messenger of Allah. Allah exalted Z then revealed, your women are a tilt for you to cultivate, so go to your tilt as he will. He said, if you want, you can penetrate your wives from a back position or from a front position, or if you want, from a kneeling down position. He meant by this, penetrating their woman's vaginas. Are you not sick of hearing this garbage? You see, I mean, I'm uh, here I'm talking to a woman, what her Muslim sources say, and it's all about vaginas and penises. He meant by this, Penetrating their woman's vaginas for many of these positions. He said, go to your tilth as you will. This was narrated by Al-Hakim Abu Abdullah in the Sahih. Notice Sahih. From Abu Zakaria Al-Anbari. From Muhammad Ibn Abdul Salam. From Ishaq Ibn Ibrahim. From Al-Muharabi. Do you appreciate that the fact that Muhammad's God said, it doesn't matter what the woman says. You can plow into her front, behind, kneeling, standing. Do you like that? No. But you have no choice. This is in the Quran. Let's go to the next page. Sayyid bin Muhammad al-Hayani informed us. Abu Ali ibn Abi Bakr al-Faqi. Abu al -Qad I'm going to skip this, man. It's too long. Anyway, we heard Jabir saying, the Jew said, if a man has sex with his wife, when she's in a kneeling down position, <clears throat> any child born, as a result of this intercourse, will be cross-eyed. Allah then revealed these verses. Your women are a tilt for you. So go to your tilt as he will. Say, okay, here we go again. Let me skip the sunnah, okay? Abu Quraib, who is reported to have heard 
Al Numan Ibn Rashid narrated from Al Zuhri from Muhammad Ibn Al Munqal Qadir from Jabir bin Abdullah who said the Jews said when a man has sexual intercourse with his wife while she is in a kneeling down position any child born to them as a result of this will be cross-eyed then Allah revealed this verse nah that's nonsense dude don't listen you can do what you want if you want you can have intercourse with them in a kneeling down position if you want a different position as long as the penetration happens in the vagina all right now we're going to skip this part the Sheikh Abu Hamid Ibn al Sharqi said, This is a great hadith which equals 100 hadiths. Okay, let's skip that. All the way, we're going to skip the Senate to Ibn Abbas, Muhammad's first cousin. Ibn Abbas, who said, Umar ibn al Khattab went to the Messenger of Allah and said to him, I have perished. The Prophet exclaimed, What is the reason of your peril? He said, I turned over the carriage of my camel. Do you like the fact that a Muslim man called his wife a camel? No. But who called her a camel? Umar ibn al-Khattab, the second caliph. So he said, my wife is a camel, and I turned her over, meaning from behind, to mount her. So you're a camel that Muslim men mount. You okay with this religion? Now, knowing, um, no. I didn't know any of this. I know. I, I thought, well... The way I grew up, I thought it was the you know it's the true religion, it's a peaceful religion. Very peaceful. And then people asking me these questions, and I'm you know thinking it's a lie. Now finding out, unfortunately, it's it's there. You can't deny it. Yep. A few more references, sister. And I think you got enough. Then I'm gonna show you some of the teachings of our Lord before I let you go. Okay, so I'm ruined. All right. And then he says, the prophet did not answer. But then this verse, your women are a tilt for you to cultivate. So go to your tilt as you will, was revealed to the mention of Allah, meaning penetrate your eyes from the front or from the back, but avoid penetrating in the anus or during their menstruation. Ay vey. All right. Final one. This is all here. Abu, uh, damn, this. Sorry, guys. I'm going to skip the Senate. I'm just going to get to the main speaker. <clears throat> Sayyid bin al Musayyib, <clears throat> who was asked about the saying of Allah, so go to your tilt as you will. And he said, This was revealed about coitus interruptus. You know what that means, sister? I'm sorry, I have to explain this garbage to you. Please no, forgive me. It's, it's okay. Go ahead, explain. The men were asking Muhammad, Can we pull out and ejaculate, or do we have to keep it in and ejaculate in her? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No. I'm not laughing. Oh yes, I, it's, I don't very, know it's just very uncomfortable. Like, tell me about it, and I gotta read it to you. Yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> you see what's occupying Muhammad and his God and his followers? Yes, and honestly, um, again, I'm not talking bad about anyone, but you know, growing up Arab, they've been very like strict about like sexual things like it's always been about sexual things to them thank you so, so let's, yep i know it's disgusting well i'm going to give you some words from the bible and you're going to see the difference <clears throat> this was revealed about coitus interruptus <clears throat> and the report of calvi ibn abbas said now this is muhammad's <clears throat> first cousin this was revealed about the immigrants immigrants means those who migrated to medina they mentioned having sex with their wives from the front and back positions and did not see any harm in doing so as long as the penetration was done in the woman's sexual organ. The helpers and Jews, meaning the Muslims in Medina and the Jews who were present condemned this and mentioned that the only lawful way of sleeping with a one's wife is to do it from the front position. The Jews also mentioned that they find in Torah <clears throat> that it is filth in the sight of Allah to sleep with one's wife in any other position than when the wife is lying on her back. They're talking about the Talmud here, by the way. And failing to do so is the cause why children are born cross-eyed or mentally disturbed. The Muslims mention this in the Messenger of Allah, saying, in the pre-Islam period, after we embrace Islam, we always had sex with our wives in any position we like. The Jews have condemned us for doing so and further claimed this and that. And so Allah exalted as he gave the lie to the Jews and revealed this verse to give dispensation. So go to your tilt as you will. He says the sexual organ of the wife is the plantation where the child grows. 
So go to your tilt as you will, meaning from in front of her and from behind her, as long as the penetration is done in her sexual organ. So do you like the fact that you're called a plantation? No. All right. Now, let me show you what mom said women are stupid. I have an article, but I'm just going to go to sunnah.com and show you. Okay. All right. And it's based on the Quran, by the way. Okay. Yeah, no, I have the Quran right next to me. Yeah. And I'll show you the verses he's quoting. All right. Just so you do. Deficiency, mind, intelligence. So let's see what pops up. Here you go. Right here. You see it? First one that popped up. Mm-hmm. Sal Bukhari, Volume 1, Book 6, Hadith 301. Okay? I'm going to give you the Hadith. There's many of them, but I think this suffices. So I'm going to send it to you, and he's going to be quoting the Quran. He's going to be quoting Surah Al-Baqarah, Chapter 2, Verse 228, that it takes two women to equal a man's testimony. Surah Al-Baqarah, Chapter 2, Verse 228. Here it is. Narin Abu Sayyid al-Khudri. Once Allah's Messenger went out to the Musalla to offer the prayer of Eid al-Adha or al-Fitr prayer. Then he passed by the woman and said, Oh woman, give alms. As I've seen that the majority of the dwellers of hellfire were you. So most people in hell are women? That's what it says. Really? Hmm. Okay, but now why? Um, I'm not sure. From what I heard, though, again, this was a long, like, long time ago. It, I heard it was because of gossip. Women like to gossip. No, he says it right there, sisters, because it says you're stupid in comparison to men. Read it. Right well, here. yeah, no, I, I see it now. So, right here. watch here. Let me read it. It was an, okay. another unfortunate lie. Exactly. They've been lying through their teeth to you, huh? Because they asked the reason. They asked, why is it so, Allah's messenger? He replied, you curse frequently and are grateful to your husbands. Well, wait, don't men curse also? Yes. Aren't they ungrateful to their wives? Yes, very. But here it says, no, you're the ones who are the majority of hell for these reasons. Now watch here. I have not seen anyone more deficient in intelligence and religion than you. Black and white. Mm -hmm. You are stupider and more deficient in religion than anyone else a cautious sensible man could be led astray by some of you damn so a man who's caught who's cautious and sensible can be misled by you meaning look how evil stupid and deficient you are now watch the woman asks all his messenger what is deficient in our intelligence and religion he said is not the evidence of two women equal to the witness of one man he's quoting surat al-baqarah chapter 2 verse 2 28 that says Two men are needed to bear witness. If you can't find two men, one man and two women. One man and two women. Wow. They replied in the affirmative. Yeah, you're right, because the Quran says so. He said, this is the deficiency in her intelligence. Isn't it true that a woman can neither pray nor fast during her menses? The one replied in the affirmative. He said, this is the deficiency in religion. Now, do you see what you got blamed for? Do you have any control over your menses? No, I don't. But Muhammad said, because when you are menstruating, you can't pray or fast, he shows that you are inferior in religion. How's that your fault? It's not. But it says... Yeah, I've always wondered that. I've gotten asked that question. Hmm. Um, so that's your religion. But now let me show you the difference with Jesus. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember, Allah made Muhammad lust for a married woman? Yes. And I'm going to show you the Apostle Paul, who's just a slave of Jesus, but he was so holy and righteous that he makes Muhammad look like garbage. Okay, now watch. Look what Paul's going to say. And by the way, he's never married. Look what Paul's going to say about how husbands should treat their wives and their equality, meaning in the eyes of God, they have the same value and dignity and worth. But first, let me show you what Jesus says about Muhammad. For lusting for a married woman. And then I'm going to show you what the true word of God says. All right, hold on. Let me line it up for you. Okay, let's go to Galatians. All right, right here. Matthew 5, 27. All right. It says 27, 28. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in her, his heart. Wait, 
did Muhammad lust for a married woman? Mm -hmm. So he's an adulterer in his heart, right? Unfortunately, um, reading the context, that's what it says, yes. So how can Allah be the God revealed in Jesus when Jesus says, if you even desire a woman who's married, you're an adulterous pig? Okay, now, mm -hmm. what happens when a man divorces a woman unlawfully and then someone marries her? That's what Zayd did. He just divorced her, right, for no good reason? Yeah. And then Muhammad married her, right? Yeah. Matthew 5, 31, 32. Now it was said, whoever sends his wife away, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except for the reason of sexual morality. Now was Zainab sexually immoral? No, right? Because mm -hmm. even Zayed said, no, she's good. So he just divorced her for no good reason. So a man who divorces his wife makes her commit adultery. Whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Now, did Muhammad marry a divorced woman? He did. And that woman was not sexually immoral, right? No. And that means Muhammad is an adulterous pig, and he made Zainab an adulterous woman, according to Jesus. Now, let me give you what Paul says about women. 1 Corinthians 7, verses 1 to 5. Watch it. Tell me. The difference between the Quran saying you're stupid, you're deficient, you are a field, and the man owns you and can plow into you with this. And Paul was not married. Mm -hmm. Look, 1 Corinthians 7, verses 1 to 5. Now, concerning the things about what you wrote, they were asking questions. Look, you know, uh, there's tribulation. Christians are going to kill. Should we get married? Should we be celibate? But we're burning, right? Mm -hmm. It is good for a man not to touch a woman, meaning be celibate. But because of sexual immoralities, each man is to have his own wife and each woman is to have her own husband, right? Yes. So one man for one woman, one woman for one man. Right there. Mm -hmm. Now watch the equality. The husband must fulfill his duty to his wife. And likewise, also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. He owns her body. But now watch. And likewise, also the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do you get any more fair than this? Yeah. You understand what he's saying here? Look. I do. Husbands, your wives own your body. If they want to be pleasured, you better not deny them. Mm -hmm. Anymore they deny you. But is that what the Quran said? The Quran said, hey, you are a field and a man can plow into you. See the difference? Yeah, I see it. Stop depriving one another. You see what he's saying? Husbands, do not deprive your wives of intimacy and vice versa. Except by agreement for a time. Unless you agree, look, honey, let's now take a couple of days off to fast and pray. So that me devote yourselves to prayer and come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Now, you know what that means, right? Yeah. You're married. Mm -hmm. And your husband says, honey, can we... Fast for a week and not have sex? You have the right to say no, and he can't do it. You know that? It has to be mutually agreed upon. Mm -hmm. No, sweetie, I can't because I have needs, and I need need you. You get my point, right? Yeah, I do. You have to agree. So if you say no, the husband has to honor you. Okay, sweetie, I honor you. Okay, now the final one. Galatians 3, 26 to 29. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Now watch. If you are baptized into Christ and you believe in Christ, God does not discriminate. He doesn't think Jews are better than Greeks, Greeks better than Jews. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free man. Free man is not better than a slave if you're in Christ Jesus. There's neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. The man is not better than a woman. And if you belong to Christ and you're Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. Did you see what the true God revealed in Jesus just said? Yes. He said, you who are baptized into Christ and believe in Christ, you are precious 
and equally valued and equally loved as the man. You understand? Yeah. So this is the true God revealed in Jesus Christ. The true God revealed you. And another thing, did you notice? It says you're all sons of God. In Islam, Allah is not a father. You're not his daughter. You're his slave. A slave. Yes, we're slaves. But the God of the Bible says, no, you are my daughter. And did you know that the God of the Bible loves adoption? Can I show it to you? Yes, please. <laughs> Here it is. Look at the difference. Galatians 4, verses 4 to 7. Galatians 4, verse 4 to 7. But when the fullness of the time came, <clears throat> God sent forth his son. That's Jesus. Born of a woman. Born under the law. So that he might redeem those who are under the law. That we might receive what? Adoption. As sons. Sons means sons and daughters. It's a generic. Mm -hmm. and because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son to our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Did you see what that means? Mm -hmm. When you believe in Christ, the Holy Spirit emboldens you and assures you, you are his daughter. And the father loves you. And you can call him daddy. Abba means daddy. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son or a daughter. If a son, then an heir through God. So how can Allah the Quran be the God revealed in Jesus when the God revealed loves adoption? In fact, who do you think started all these adoption agencies? Christians. It's a mm -hmm. fact. Who do you think are the leading Proponents of adoption, Christians. Who do you think go out of the way to adopt? Christians. Why? Because they're reflecting the spirit of their father. Our father wants to be our father and adopts, and he loves adoption, and we love what God loves and hate what God hates. And that's it. So I hope that answers your questions. I don't know if there's more, but if you want, if you have more questions, we can do it another time because it's over two hours. And I mm -hmm. want to give you time to process it because now it's recorded. You can go back and watch. Yeah, it's a lot to. Um, yes, take your time. Go watch slowly and pray for now. Here's what you need to do. Start reading the Bible. Like I told you, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, mm -hmm. and pray. Say, God, I know you're real. There's no way creation could exist without you. But here's what I need. You need to show me who you are because I'm a woman born in a Muslim culture that can be persecuted, perhaps even killed, God forbid. Mm -hmm. I need to have absolute assurance that either Muhammad is a false prophet or a true prophet, and I need to know whether Jesus is the Son of God, became flesh from the Virgin, died for me, and rose again, and that salvation is only in Jesus Christ. Shadif, and my Bible says your prophet is a whore in hell. Come on up and debate me, you piece of garbage. Sorry about that. This Muslim stone liquor is manifesting. So that's what you need to do, sister. Okay. I I will. Thank you. Come back if you have more questions. I will. Thank you so much. I was I was like I was okay. struggling a lot. <laughs> and if you come back to that next time, because these guys are telling me how to run my channel, like Ocean APG, because he thinks he owns me and I'm a slave. Mm -hmm. Uh we can talk about other filth, filthy acts, but not right now. If you come back tomorrow or some other day, I'll show you where Islam actually teaches female. <clears throat> genital mutilation that women in muslim cultures are to get circumcised for females yep 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 but let's save it if you want to come back tomorrow because this is a lot i'll show it to you okay yeah no i'm i'm open to it all right contact me if you're available to me, i will <laughs> i say okay i'm ready for more by the grace of god and bring more questions we can do it tomorrow lord willing. I, will. I will all right take care thank you so much anytime all right, guys, I'm going to do another session. It's already two hours. Good crowd. May God increase our numbers for the glory of Jesus. But instead of doing two different topics, Lord willing, I'll be back. Right now, it's 3.34 p.m. New York time. I'll be back in two hours, God willing. I'll try to do something at 5.30 p.m. New York time, Michigan time, right? Eastern Standard Time. We'll do Trinity and Isaiah because I don't want to do two topics. This is sufficient in of itself. But can you pray for me and my beloved and my daughters? Pray for us that God will give us supernatural, miraculous protection, safety, health, 
that I get healthier, get leaner and holier, and God have mercy on us and forgive us and purify us in the blood of Jesus Christ to practice what we preach even though we fail and we struggle. The Lord provide for me and through me and bring about his perfect will. I can tell you she's a wonderful woman. God knows who she is, and may the Lord protect her. Lord willing, I'll see you in two hours. Let's make the numbers go up. Love you guys for the sake of Jesus, and Jesus is alive, and pray for Sabrina. Amen. We love you, Lord Jesus. See you in two hours. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Take care.